I'm Udini, and this is the hottest review I've ever done. How's it guys? Welcome back. Now, why did I say that this is possibly the hottest review that I've ever done? It's because there have been massively negative reviews around the 3080 Ti as a whole, not with regards to, welcome to the show, Mr. GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. This is the MSI Supreme X, but the negativity has been around its market positioning and where does it fit in? Is it worth it? And we're gonna be going through all of that. So what I've done is I've performed some extensive testing on this graphics card. I've pushed it to its absolute limit without overclocking it. But what are we gonna look at today? As per normal, we're gonna go over its features, its design, its specifications, any kind of hidden Easter eggs that we may find. And lastly, we will end with our conclusion. But before we get there, let's quickly unbox this bad boy. So minor disclaimer, I have already unboxed it, but I've put it back perfectly so that you wouldn't even notice. So first thing that's gonna happen, and we might switch to some different camera angles here, is that you are introduced to the Supreme, where it even says Supreme. I don't know, is it Supreme? Supreme, but you will get your card, you will get a mouse pad, which is pretty cool, won't lie and you will get a document full of a whole bunch of information leaflets from, I mean, I don't know why there's so much. I mean, it's just putting their different products in, I guess. Installation card, graphics holders card, installation guide. Um, don't really need that. How to upgrade your PC with a new graphics card. I uh, guess some tips and tricks on the graphics card, the quick user's guide, and lastly, thank you for choosing this MSI product. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks to MSI for sending it to me. So let's put all of that away. Okay, so jumping straight into it, putting that aside, here is the card. Absolutely beautiful card, but the unboxing experience isn't over. So. A lot of cards tend to droop as soon as you plug them into the PCIe, even if you lock them in on the bolts. So what MSI has really cleverly done is it's given us a bracket to hold it up. And it's pretty simple. Looks like I've done this before, hey? And that goes like that. And then you wanna obviously put that upside down, rubber towards the top, because this will sit at the bottom of the card. And then once it's mounted in, and I'll show you that picture again, you can basically just give a little bit of lift so that you don't have that droop. So guys, that is the unboxing experience, but a graphics card is not about unboxing, it is about playing with it. So, I hope my mic hasn't gone too soft. Let's look at this unit a little bit closer, and then we'll dive into all of the Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost Okay guys, let's start off with design. So, how is this card designed? It's a PCIe, full for optimal results, but that's more specs. So, there are seven individual heat pipes inside onto the heatsink and it has really, really thin blades. So heat dissipation is really good, but we'll see in performance how well it did under massive pressure. If we look at the back, and I laugh because I honestly had to practice this, we got three uh, DisplayPort 1.4 A's and then we have got HDMI 2.1 for 4K gameplay. And that sounds easy, but try to say it to yourself. You'll, you'll probably get it right the first time. Looking at the top, we have our graphene plate as well as we introduced to our first little bit of RGB that you would have seen light up in the video before where Lucky the Dragon or the Emblem has a addressable RGB pattern. Looking at the front or 
side, if you will. Notably, as apart from the 20 series graphics cards, we don't have any additional fan inputs, which I guess is a good thing because otherwise you have that little random cordy hanging there, but I digress. Looking on the other side, we do have the ability to change it from gaming to silent and not really something that I would want to play with because if you do have Dragon Center, which we'll discuss in software, you can actually change the fan curves to say that at which operating temperature, how fast the fans spin. But more importantly, we have got three PCIe connectors or eight pin connectors, all of which will be needed. So if you are planning on getting one of these cards, plan ahead because three are required. Some 3080s, uh, require two, some 3080s require three, but I believe all 3080 Ti's require three. And then last but not least, we have tri frozen fans. So this works off of torque four. So these fans work in conjunction to create positive air pressure in order to dissipate that heat. But remember that heat has to go somewhere. So ensure if you are, sorry, I'm just giving tips here, but ensure that you do have good heat air recycling with inside your case so that this car doesn't get too hot. Overall on design, it's a really, really solid build. There are no flimsy bits, which you could generally find in a lot of graphics cards. I mean, the most flimsy bit would be the PCIe connector because it it's, I mean, it's the most exposed part, but otherwise it's extremely, extremely solid and, and heavy. Okay guys, specs, and I'm gonna go through this quickly because specs don't really matter, it's all about performance. Well, they do matter because that's what causes the performance. The first thing I'm gonna point out is that this has 10,240 CUDA cores, the main functioning graphic component of any graphics card. And what the 1390 has is 10,496. So we are 256 short, which is a minuscule amount when comparing the 3080 Ti with the 3090. Moving on from that, it has 12 gigs of GDDR6X, but more noti uh, notably rather on that is it operates off the 386 bit memory bus, which is the same memory bit bus as the 3090 and different from the 3080, which is a 320 bit bus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up a graphic so that you can actually compare all of the different stats from a 3090 to a 3080 Ti to a 3080 to a 3070 Ti to a 3070 and you can compare the ray tracing cores, the tensor cores and all of those differences which will be important when we get to our conclusion. So let's move on to our next section which is the features. Features! So the first feature that you'll see is quite a simple little feature where you can adjust from gaming to silent on the card. It's a little physical switch that you would just click silent or gaming. Secondly is the Dragon Center or you can use MSI, MSI Center. You can change the RGB effects and you can also monitor what's going on with the card with regards to its temperature and its performance. And in Mystic Light, that's where you would change the RGB effects, which you can synchronize with all your other devices, provided that Dragon Center recognizes it. If you are using all MSI products, it's pretty much a breeze, as you can see, with blue, 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 just everything blue, Houdini blue. But I digress. The last feature that we will look at is Afterburner or MSI Afterburner, which is the gold standard when it comes to overclocking. It is the simplest program to use and it is not exclusive to MSI cards. You can use it with any, any card, but you can choose this program to either make your card underperform or even overperform by changing, as you'll see on your screen, the core clock, memory clock, power limits, as well as the temperature limits. Not recommended for people that don't know what they're doing. However, technology is quite clever nowadays that if you do something incorrect, just like with RAM, it just won't work. However, you can cause damage if you don't know what you're doing. So rather watch some tutorial videos. I love overclocking and I do promise that I did not overclock this card because I wanted you to see its raw performance. And talking about performance, that's what comes next. Okay guys, let's talk about performance, but how did I measure performance? So I did quite a few things. The first thing that I did was used 3D Mark Time Spy and 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. Now, this was paired with a 5900X from AMD, and in a lot of situations, with the same pairing in benchmark, this actually beat 3090s. Now, am I saying that because it's a Supreme? 
you be the judge because the results are there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you the results from 3D Mark Time Spy and 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme so that you can see like for like, pound for pound without any overclocking stock standard on both the CPU as well as the graphics card, how it performed. The second way that I tested the card was by playing games. The first game that I played was Call of Duty Vanguard that's on beta at the moment, then on Warzone, and then a game called Deathloop. And big ups, thank you to Bethesda Studios for sending me the code for Deathloop so that I could test this card and put it through its paces. But we're going to go through each game individually. now. All games were set to Ultra, which you will see in the videos, but let's check out how it performed in Vanguard. Now, let's see how it performed in Warzone. Lastly, let's check how it performed in Deathloop. Now, just a quick note to Ben, a Deathloop is more of a console game. It actually is a console game that has been released on Steam. Extremely fun, not gonna give anything away, but you could see just how well this card is performing in all three games with ultra settings and higher render resolution. This card really performed. And honestly, for the first time, this is the saddest I've ever been to finish a review because I don't get to use it anymore. Okay guys, conclusion, and this is probably the saddest conclusion I've ever done. Why? Because I loved this card. I just loved it. it. My PC responded faster, games were enjoyable, everything was amazing. But we have to look at cold hard facts and I'm pretty sure this is how the rest of the reviewers in the world got to their decision on how they concluded the worth of the 3080 Ti. So to do that, I'm gonna bring up a graphic and we're gonna talk mathematics. The CUDA cores difference is 10,240 to 8,704. Memory, 12 to 10. 
which is a two gig difference, which is not really that big of a difference. Yes, it does have a different bus of the 386 versus the 320, but negligible-ish. Now, price. We can see the price in US is 1199, that's the MSRP set by NVIDIA, as opposed to the 3080 699. Now, in South Africa, right now, this card you can get for 3999. I couldn't find a 3080 to compare it with because there's none available, but I remembered that the 3080 was around 2399, 2499 when it first came out. So, I put those together and I did a couple of calculations. First, I worked out the difference on the CUDA cores, which you can see is 17.65% difference on CUDA cores. Secondly, the RAM is a 20% difference in RAM. Now, lastly, this might seem like a weird stat, but it's the effective speed of the card. And you can see, I, well, you can't see, but I took research from a host of benchmarks and got an average of around 13% of effective speed on the 3080 Ti versus the 3080. Now taking all three of these factors, putting them in the wash and coming out with an average gets us to 16.88%. Now the price difference in Rand at least is 24% difference. Take those two off of each other and you're sitting with a negative 7.12% return. Now, what does that mean in totality? It means that the 3080 is better value for money. And that is why I'm sad because I really enjoyed the card, but the 3080 is better value for money statistically, mathematically. The 3090 is better for 4K gaming. However, we are in a market that is very, very difficult to actually get a hold of stock, especially a 3080. And if you cannot afford a 3090, but still wanna get great performance, a 3080 Ti is a great option. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And please leave comments or any questions that you might have in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and love the video if you did. Anyway, cheers guys, goodbye.